If you follow the calendar in the church these past week and coming up, it offers the opportunity to hopefully recognize the beauty and the wonder of all of God's creation. We celebrated the archangels, those huge messengers of God, as they, in salvation history, offer to us God's continued word of how he interacts with us. Then we had St. Jerome, the translator to the Latin of much of the scripture. And then we celebrated the guardian angels yesterday. Tomorrow is, especially for us as Franciscans, the celebration of St. Francis of Assisi. In all of these celebrations, it becomes the opportunity for us to reflect on our experiential life and to put it in context of our salvation history, to realize that God's great love takes science and reason and faith and melds them together. And in God's words, in our salvation history, in the saints, he offers to us a culmination of how are we going to live? From the very beginning, when we hear in Genesis God's creation, the wonder and the beauty, we look at today and we see in the second form of creation, that relationship that God builds, that as he created man in his own image, that he then brought forth to him all the different creatures and wild animals to see if any were worthy. And ultimately, bone from bone, flesh from flesh, he makes the partner equal in grace and love, that he may have a worthy partner. But that stewardship that he offers to us is one of great beauty of then how do we live? How do we interact with one another? Paul then takes that to a higher level, looking at who is this Jesus that came into our world? What difference does he make? All the difference in the world. For just as one man died and brought sin, so Jesus brings life, that he died for our sins. And in that love and in that grace, he who was the creator becomes the created and comes as a master teacher in all of humility, and yet with that wisdom and grace to ask us, how am I living? What's my experience? And in that teaching, he would interact with the people of his time. And as he did so, it was always interesting that I believe Jesus stepped back a moment to try to listen of what is being said, what is being asked. And in that questioning, to try to determine, is there an openness? Is there an understanding? Is there really a wish to grow? Today, we hear how the Pharisees come to ask him a question that they already have the answer to. It's not that they're open to any movement. It's they want to try to trap him. And Jesus listens, steps back, and he says, okay, you ask me this question. Basically, how do you interpret what Moses says? Well, Moses said that it can happen. And Jesus is like, yeah, you forgot the other part of it. That when God created us, he created us in a relationship. The relationship with God, a relationship with one another, and then how is that fruitful and that grace? And yet you hone in on the hardness of heart that Moses was dealing with 
and he offers that possibility. But what God had brought together in the best sense, in the ideal sense, should never be broken. And then it moves on. And the children are coming to Jesus. And this is where I laugh because typical disciples, us included, that the disciples look at Jesus and say, ah, he's had a hard day. We'll keep the kids away. And Jesus is like, no. When you look at a child and you see that openness and that willingness to be amazed and wonder, you see how God wants us to be. A relationship perfectly with God and then with one another. And an openness of saying, in my experience, in my life, and in my understanding, how am I being that steward of God's creation and the beauty and the giftedness he offers to me? First, in my life, to realize the depth of that love, and then going out in my faith, realizing that love that God has, how do I share that? And how am I at awe? I think one of the wonders that I look at when I see parents, especially with young children, is that eyes of another generation being opened. And in that wonder and in that beauty of being amazed as they are amazed. And in their growth of wanting them to recognize their potential. Isn't that what Jesus asks of us? As he asks us to listen to his word, to share in the sacraments, to go forth in our life with one another, seeking that wonder and relationship. We celebrate St. Francis of Assisi tomorrow. And as we do so, we look at Pope Francis in that Laudatio C that he wrote on how are we caring for creation as a whole, but also for one another. There's a great deal to work on, but it's not in division that Jesus asks us to live. It's in that wonder and awe of one another and an openness to continually grow in the teachings of Jesus and in that love and that care to recognize that and how I can share that goodness with my family, with my friends, with those who I do not even know. As we celebrate today, may we take the opportunity to realize the beauty and wonder of our life and in our experience, to give thanks to God, to realize the stewardship, the responsibilities asking me to take and seek to live that out with all of creation. And in that beauty and in that wonder, truly to give praise. Looking at what is my attitude. The Eucharist, Thanksgiving, gives us that clue of truly being grateful for the wonders that God gives to us. Realizing that he walks and journeys with us. That even in that sadness and difficult and challenging things, that he cries with us but he also laughs with us in the good things, asking us to be open, to have that sense of humor, to realize the beauty, as Francis understood so well, that we might share the wonders of all creation.